Over to you, Heather. Thanks very much. <laughs> Whether they've started doing anything yet or not is a different story, but they're interested and they've started playing around with things. The best piece of advice I've ever got comes from that being isolated. When you start doing things like this, some people would really love you, you've got a whole network at your school that's doing it. But most of us are sort of blowing little nuts, doing our own thing. Um, and the best piece of advice I got was find your people. Because once I found people that I connected with and resonated with, I've come so much further. All right, so why I decided to flip was a lot of the reasons we've probably already spoken to and they're probably pretty similar to the reasons you guys are here today as well. But I wanted more time to cover the difficult content. So I found that I was introducing a concept and we got time to do the basics in class and then the lesson was over and to be able to get through everything in the year, I didn't have enough time to spend another lesson on the hard stuff. So anything that was more challenging was tacked on the end of the lesson and if they didn't get it done, it was homework. And then they didn't have the support to do it at home so it never got done in the first place. Um, I wanted to replace that then with the lower of the school. I wanted them to be doing things that they were comfortable with and capable of doing at home on their own without that support and bring more time back into the classroom. I wanted everything to be more self-paced. So, in my classrooms, and I still don't flip all my classrooms, so I still have this horrible feeling when I'm standing up front of my year nine class and I'm not flipping, watching them take notes. And it's, to me, it seems like such a huge waste of time. I'm standing there doing nothing. Half the class has finished taking notes, the other half have been talking, and now they're taking notes, and we're all just waiting for everyone to finish. And it's a huge waste of time. And you've got students who are smashing through the work because they understood it straight away and they're finished and you're giving them maybe extension work or something, but there's other students who would love to spend the whole lesson doing just that first bit. So I want it to be more self-paced. I wanted there to be more peer collaboration, more time for them to work with each other rather than listening to me. And I wanted it to be more personal. I felt like I didn't know my students and that's one of the major ones and Jeremy's already spoken about it. But I didn't feel like I knew them. I felt like I knew the students who always put up their hands to answer questions or who, I don't know, went the naughty one, whatever it is. I only knew the sort of the key players in the classroom. I didn't know everyone and I didn't know where they were at very well. So to sum all that up, flipping gives me more time to do the things I've always wanted to do in my classroom, but I never felt like I had time to when I was teaching traditionally. So I can stand up here and Jeremy and Brennan can stand up here and tell you how amazing all of this is, but I think it means so much more when it comes from students. So like I said, last year I flipped one class, I flipped my year 10s, and at the end of the year I got them to record feedback for me about what we've been doing. So I've trimmed it down, so you've got these little snippets, I actually ended up with a huge amount of really good feedback, but just to give you an idea. The benefits of this sort of classroom is that this has more one on one time with us and it's time conditioned. Um, when we come in, if we have any questions.
we have more time to get more work done and talk to less and ask questions and stuff, and we don't have to waste a lot of time doing a PowerPoint when we don't really need that more. Yeah. You're in control of your learning, and I think that also helps independence. I hate how when you're doing work at um, we do work at home and you can't get past the question and you don't have to answer the question. Someone was there to help you. It's better because you're bringing that into class. Since we've started doing the flipped classroom, personally, I feel I'm learning better because I'm learning at my own pace rather than having a set time to rush through the work. Yeah, and that way you can help other classmates. If everyone has the basic knowledge before they come into the class, then the teacher can help with the harder questions. Also, videos can be rewatched. So, if there's something you don't understand or you want to revise, you can just go back and it's available for you straight away. Some advice for the teachers would be to take your time with it. Like when Miss Davis started, it wasn't perfect, but like, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's pretty good. I think this can be used for all subjects. Like at least to give a brief overview of what the lesson will be containing. So we like it. <laughs> I say you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> so my favourite piece of feedback I've ever got is from George a little bit earlier who said, be persistent. When Miss Davis started it wasn't great, but she was persistent and it paid off, take your time with it. And that's but that's what we're trying to teach to them as well in classes. You might not get it straight away, but keep going. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later on about getting the students on board. These kids, almost all of them, are now in my year 11 class and they've taken complete ownership of this whole thing. Like the whole flip learning movement in our class, it's their little baby as well as it is mine because they were in that first class and it's theirs. So yeah, they're all 100% on board with it. I 